So the past few weeks, I think it's been maybe two, three months, I've been using this planter for a better taproot development for this cutting. And there's a few seedlings and this juvenile, you wouldn't call it like a seedling, but it wouldn't, it's not an adult exactly. So they've all been getting the same treatment. Initially, I was using the treated water every watering, so it'd be once a week. Then I reduced it to every other watering. So it's one time treated, one time untreated, so that it flushes the material. So after a bit more studying on the matter, I decided to just come out and say what the treatment is. I'm using sodium chloride or table salt at a concentration that based on I think three or four different papers it attains what I want there's some minimal benefits without excessive damage so that the growth rate isn't heavily affected so with sodium chloride, there's the sodium, which is a non-essential, and the chloride, which is a non-essential mineral. With some plants, hydrophiles, I think that's how you say it, they actually do really well in extremely salty soils. But this isn't the case with our cacti. But the main idea behind using sodium chloride is that when the taproot or feeder roots are in presence of a saline soil, instead of spreading out feeder roots, their main their main root it wouldn't be the taproot, but it, it'd be the main root continues growing so that its membrane continues searching for water without intaking excessive salt which the sodium builds up so uh, the reason I'm sharing this is since there is a possibility of not not mineral buildup or salt buildup in the actual mineral soil but a buildup in the plant itself. Since it's a non-essential, it's not used as readily as other nutrients and other minerals. So with time, it may build up and kill the seedlings or the plants in general. But I don't think that's a big issue considering some cacti in habitat do pretty well despite very saline conditions. The main one that comes to mind is the Kopikoa, which has recently been a huge favorite among collectors. In habitat, they are literally oceanside. And some will say, oh, but you don't need to water with salt water. It gets water from the fog in the morning, but the ocean spray will undoubtedly bring salt pretty far inland. And some are literally on the coast. So if I, I, I tried maybe three or four times now to get some Coca-Cola seeds, but I've had no success. Either customs is throwing them away or they're getting lost in the mail. So I've given up sourcing seeds to experiment on for Copacoa Alba. And I don't really have much room, but I, it was an in interest of mine in trying that out. If you have 
extra seedlings of Copacoa, the larger, the larger species like Alba and the other ones, I don't know their names. But I would experiment using a low concentration of salt in each watering since that may through stress and other mechanisms bring out that very white wax buildup on the surface and yeah that's it I'm just sharing that I am treating this planter with salt I'm using five moles of salt so that's 1.5 grams per 500 ml or 3 grams per liter and I don't think there's been any major halt and growth what I have noticed is that this seedling doesn't seem affected at all and it's been growing quite well there's been little growth so far but we are in winter still and other downsides to using salt on plants is that besides the slightly restricted plant growth which again I can't determine since we are in winter and there's zero nutrient here is that usually there's less fruits and less seeds in those fruits and less flowering as well so that's another downside but after this summer in maybe six or eight months I'll be checking the taproot on this and see how well it's been developing I'll continue doing this treatment every other watering just since I don't want I'm not scared of a mineral buildup in the soil but a mineral buildup in the actual cactus so yeah that's what I'll be doing. I'll measure out and show that I'm using the salt. Yeah, that's it. So if anyone has, like I mentioned, extra Coca-Cola, even degrafts, my original idea would be to graft a Coca-Cola for a year or two. And then during the degraft, for two motives, you would treat with salt water which would be for the, the white coat on their skin. Using high sun exposure does help and I've seen a few collections that even shaded plants do quite well at gaining that coating. But I would assume that salt also plays a role and bringing out that white appearance. And the salt in itself would provide more compact growth since despite watering frequently, the roots wouldn't bring up as much since there's also salt present. So it's kind of a give and take most people shy away from salt and some of them think they actually ha already have too much salt since they use nutrients which contain salts itself but yeah i think it's worthy of experimenting there's been a discussion on a reddit that i've had with another member on salt for alkaloid accumulation he had the idea that it might increase it i didn't include that in the video i made since the pathway or the enzyme 
that's activated with salt stress isn't directly used in mescaline biosynthesis. So I just decided not to include that. But I'm sharing this so that if anyone has interest in experimenting with salt for different factors, I think it's a good idea with excess seedlings. With time, I might apply it to my other seedlings. I, like I said, at the dose that I'm applying, it doesn't affect the growth rate excessively and doesn't cause as much problems. Higher doses do cause issues, so be aware of that. And that's it. Então, nesses últimos dois ou três meses, eu estava aguando esse jarro com água tratada e o tratamento que eu estava usando era sal. O sódio e o, o cloro, cloro não são essencial minerais para as plantas. Então, com o tempo, tem um acúmulo desses minerais dentro da, da planta que pode, pode causar morte neles, se for excesso demais. Em caca, eu não acho que é um grande problema, já que tem uns cactos que faz bem em presença de sal, igual o Copecoa, lá em Chile. Umas pessoas vão falar que, ah, mas eles são aguados com a nevoada da madrugada só que eles são presentes literalmente no lado do mar e eles crescem sem problema e outros cactos também já tem presença de sal por as ondas mesmo quando bate eles vão trazer com o vento o sal quilômetros dentro da longe do mar então eu acho que muitos cactos e até plantas que não estão perto de mar, mas são em cima de mares antigos, contém sal no solo. E eu estava tratando esse jar aqui já há uns dois, três meses. Eu não vi grande problema até agora. O lógico disso é que quando as raízes das plantas tem presença de sal na terra, menos que soltar essas raízes mais finas de alimentação, eles continuam só o principal para ele conseguir achar mais água sem sal para não 
Ele continua pegando água, mas ele tenta tentar achar água sem sal e não fica dividindo mais para com... beber o máximo possível. Então o lógico é que ele vai crescer um, uma raiz principal o mais longo possível. Então essa é a ideia para esse daqui, que não tem raiz ou não tinha raiz no início do experimento. Esses outros daqui também estão recebendo o mesmo tratamento. E esse daqui, esse astrofarm, está crescendo bem, independente do, da presença do sal. Eu estou usando 5 mol de sal, que equivale a 3 gramas a cada litro. Aí já que eu estou usando 500 ml, eu estou usando 1.5 gramas. Eu estou fazendo cada outro... Cada próxima vez que eu hago, eu uso uma vez sal e uma vez normal. Para não ter muito acúmulo dentro da planta em si. Aí, tem poucos benefícios do sal para as plantas. Só que os negativos são... Um mais lento crescimento. Menos frutas, menos flores e menos sementes. Então seja consciente disso se você quiser experimentar nisso. E bem, eu tentei achar essas sementes do Copicoa, esses alba, que são bem bonitos quando são adultos, para fazer esse experimento, botando, botando esse, o sal para ver se traz aquela pele bem branca. A ideia seria testar isso em os que eram enxertados, você corta, Aí começa a tratar com água de sal pra tirar aquela presença de enxertado que é bem verde, inchado. A ideia seria que ele ficasse mais compacto e trouxesse aquela pele bem icônica do Copicô, que é bem branco e belo. E é isso aí, isso eu vou depois mostrar eu pesando e aplicando. Valeu!